called Big Lobby, the you can go to biglobby.com. And it was, we, we had a web interface, we had an iPad interface for like that, for businesses to be able to manage their cash register, and an iPhone app for people to be able to buy deals. And we had a touchscreen kiosk, like a big old screen, where you can view deals nearby like, like you would at a, a mall. But all that I was doing is the, all these different interfaces were reading the same Rails apps data through JSON, and I had to use Spine or whatever to, um, to get the data. But I was basically re-implementing the whole like, core interface to Rails. So the goal is get rid of that, make it super easy so that you can use the same code on the client and server, and make it the API as simple and as intuitive as possible. So it doesn't take much mental overhead to, to, to start using it, but not to go too far and make it so abstract that it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's overly complicated because you've got to think through the abstractions and figure it out. So, the, for, there's three main problems with frameworks like Rails. There's no standard way of sending JSON back to the client and back and forth. It needs to be like a standardized JSON API. And there needs to be. Um, then there's a whole uh, system of synchronizing the data between multiple connected clients. There needs to be a convention for that. It's kind of abstracted away. And um, um, then also, like if you did, if you built the whole the client server using the same framework, then you, you could you remove a ton of duplication, like you don't have to use, um, yeah, that's all it is. So you don't have to use two different test suites, test frameworks for testing like server-side code and testing this, the client-side code. That's a huge problem that I don't think most people talk about. Like if you watch all the presentations on why people want to stick with Rails and keep the server its own framework and the client its own thing, it's, it's all really high level stuff, but when you actually think about it, the, you're having to, if, you're, if you're writing a whole code base yourself, you have to write tests in Ruby and tests in JavaScript, and that's like a lot of work, and it's a lot of like mental overhead. It's a lot of time, it's just wasting time that you're just spending duplicating code. And you gotta write your models on the client server and all that kind of stuff. So, the first thing, um, the first problem to solve is, is um, creating a standardized JSON API so that if, there, if there's the client and the server, you, um, there's a standard way of, of connecting the data back and forth. Because right now you have to render the JSON and build a serializer like through Backbone and send the data back to the client and parse it all yourself. But and there's no real clear way to do this. I just saw a presentation from Yahoo Cats the other day that said um, they're trying to do that in Ember, and there's like every app you have to rebuild a whole connection protocol. Um, but it boils down to all you're really doing is you're just operating on data. So you send, you just need to send them operations like a, a normal. The operations are like query conditions, like uh, select fields from whatever. Sort, limit, pagination, and there's some other one in there. So there needs to be, that, that's basically the API for sending data to the client and server. So you can also map that to a URL, create a pretty URL. I don't know if you can see that's kind of small. But there's no, in, in Rails, there's no standard um, way of parsing the URL parameters. And from my experience, there's what like the face if you look at the Facebook social graph API when you do queries, the URL has a standard structure for the way that you can parse the parameters. And I think all web web apps should implement something like, like a single standard so you don't have to waste any time doing it. Because it's really complicated to it's not complicated to do a, a basic example, but it's pretty complicated to build to parse like range queries for dates, like find all users between these two dates. Um, so there needs to be like a standard way of doing that. And you can parse that URL into JSON. Like that. That's basically the standard structure for passing 
JSON back and forth. And this object with these properties, you can call it like a criteria, a database criteria. So the client can send this JSON to the server, and the server can then take that data and convert it to a database call, send the data back, and you can also do a URL, and it will convert it into that same structure, and create the database call, which means you can abstract away the entire controller layer in Rails, which means you can, like, you don't need, you, you, all, all the operations on data work. So, and then once you have this abstraction, you can abstract it more and optimize it, where you can do something like that, where you automatically shorten the keys, so this would work for MongoDB, or just sending JSON back and forth. So you can create like a standard way of sending small, smallest amount of data possible back and forth. Um, the reason this is necessary is because if you want to have like data on the, on the in the browser, say you have like a, a backbone collection of a bunch of users, and you render it into a into a list, into just a, a list of HTML, then you want to sort it and filter it by all these different conditions. You can write a Rails-like query to query the data, and you can also operate on the data, data using those queries. So there needs to be some sort of standard way of, of doing that on the, on the browser, sending it to the server and back. So using an object like this, a criteria object, it would uh, solve the problem. The other problem with the frameworks is Data synchronization. Um, all that really happens is data is being created, updated, or deleted, and it can be done in batches, and then a bunch of data can be changed at once. And then that data needs to be sent, option, op, like optionally sent, to any connected clients. But you also want to make it super easy to only send data that's authorized to the specific client. So if a user can only see the post that they've authored, then when somebody creates a post and, then, and another user is viewing the site, it should only send the change, the, send the posts that the user, the other user is allowed to see. Stuff like that. And that's really easy to do if you have a criteria object, like that JSON object. And you basically, for every record that's modified, match it against that criteria. It becomes really easy to send data to the connected clients. I'll get more into that later. So the goal of uh, by the client and server. There's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of talk about like you don't really want JavaScripts like for the browser. I guess it's a node community, so it's different. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, unified the like, client server. It cuts down the code base a lot. And it, it makes it simpler on your thought, like your mind, so you don't have to be looking, like translating through a bunch of different code, and like conceptually being uh, multiple spaces. You can still distinguish. Tower has this that folder structure that makes it easy to distinguish client server code, but you can also share the, the code between client and server. And there's a lot of conventions. It's all in the documentation on the website. But um, you you want that, and you want like uh, a standard. Like a, a Rails quality model query API, which will solve it solves all of the data problems, like being able to query by any by dates and coordinates, geo coordinates and arrays and ranges and all that kind of stuff. You have a standard structure for the URL, standard structure for sending the data back and forth, standard way of querying it in JavaScript, and it, it just makes it really easy to build things fast. Um, this is the other things in the test framework. Like, it makes test driven development much easier because you, you're using one test suite. Or not one test suite, you're using one like, test framework, Mocha. And um, yeah, there's lots of other things to optimize and simplify. So that's what Tower is. Tower is a full stack web framework for another the browser. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how it's built, just the general API. So this is what a model looks like. It's CoffeeScript now. I found that the hardcore people that are like 
uh, are already established and, and really good prefer JavaScript. But I've also found that the new people coming in prefer CoffeeScript, in my experience, because it's simpler to understand from a visual perspective. It looks a lot like Ruby. And one of the main goals in Tower is to make it so that normal people, like non-coders, people that don't necessarily want to become a hardcore hacker, can implement, implement an idea. So create an interface that's as minimal as possible, yet yeah, still like expressive, not too doesn't get obscured away in abstractions. And it makes it so that they can start building things that they want to do for the world. So this is the general API. There's fields. Fields, there, some of these are not quite implemented yet. But we, there's string, booleans, dates, arrays, and integers, floats. The bit mask idea is kind of like a cool idea, I don't know. There's a, it's basically you have an array, you map it to, you give each value a, an integer value, and then you perform bit operations on it to store it only as an integer instead of a, an array. And then geo is implemented, so you can do geo location queries. Um, super easy. And it works on the client server, so if, if you're on the client and you have a bunch of data from Google, and you put the latitude longitude into a, user model, you can then query the user by saying user.where coordinates are within five miles of some, some city, and then it'll just work. And then that, you can set that up as, as like a bindable data thing, we'll get into that later, but it's all using Ember on the client, so you can set that up as like a bindable list. So if anything that's created or updated that has those coordinates, it'll be added to the list automatically. Associations, these work on the client server as well. Um, I'm pretty excited about that. It has many through relations work as well. It's kind of, it's, it was a little tricky to implement, but it's, it's straightforward. Um, there's a lot of optimizations that can be done to make it so that you're sending the minimal data possible. But this is, by, this is the most robust uh, model layer that I've seen. There's another one called Active record.js or jazz record or something. But it's pretty old and it wasn't, it's not maintained. It didn't quite do everything. So this does everything. Um, that's what they, that's what the associations look like. And there's validations. Another time sync is mapping your server side validations to the client side. If you're building a form, and you want to say that the email is required or whatever, you uh, somehow, it would, it would be optimal, it would, be, it would clean up the code a lot if you could just somehow automatically map the validation declaration or definition from the server or the model to the form without having to do all these tricks. If you're using Rails in it, you have to use a bunch of tricks. Or you can, they're starting to solve it, but it's just, it's just a bunch of junk code that's just being hacked together to try to like make it seem like it's easy to use, it's not really well done. So the cursors is the main thing in time <coughs> that opens up a lot of possibilities. It's the core interface from Rails, it's active records, chainable scopes, and Mongoose, if you guys have used that, that uh, it implements the same thing. It's basically stuff like that recording the data. And what gets returned is on the server, just in a, it's a cursor object, but it, it's a, it acts as an array, so it has all the same array methods. And um, if you pass a callback into the all, it'll give you error and records and node, so you can do it asynchronously. Tower also has, um, it can do what Meteor does, where you have the node fibers and do it so it runs synchronously. You can turn that on and it'll, it'll work as well. Um, but that's not recommended. So this returns a uh, cursor. And on the client, it's, um, that cursor is, acts as, as an array, but it's bindable. It's an Ember object, an Ember array proxy. And if you guys, how many of you guys are familiar with Ember? Ember, how many of you guys are familiar with Ember? You guys use Backbone? What about Spine? Alright. So I'd say my personal preference, Spine, I like Spine because it's more similar to Rails. 
back one is obviously like the most documented in the space community. But um, Ember takes it like to a whole new level where it's like they have a hardcore object model for creating classes and creating mix-ins. And if you've used Ruby, it's really awesome. You're able to extend the prototype chain in a in call super and do it dynamically at runtime and stuff like that. It's, it gets complicated, but it's really cool. And all members also implemented a run loop, which I'll talk about a bit later. It's just like this hardcore optimization that is pretty hard to solve. And then there is bindings, observers. So Ember's implemented the whole observer thing. So this thing returns a cursor, it's an Ember rate proxy, it's bindable. So whenever things are added to the item, the view, the HTML is going to automatically update. So you just write this and attach it to use handlebars, and it'll automatically update the views whenever it gets changed. Another thing that Tower does is that the model layer is background jobs. And um, background jobs are for running up operations in the background. There's a simple API to that. That should be built in. And then there's a database extraction layer. So on the client, it uses memory store, working on lo lo uh, local storage. And on the back end, it uses MongoDB. But you don't care about that from a, you don't need to be worried about that initially. Um, and then we're going to get to uh, Neo4j and start implementing graph database uh, store. And then people can do MySQL. But I think that I have to make the code base JavaScript. So it's simpler. Um, what does this all mean? It means that you can write models once and use them everywhere. I think that's super powerful. It means that all the queries get bundled into a cursor so they're findable and used. And so whenever the data changes, the properties in the HTML will automatically update. And you can serialize the data and do pagination automatically from the client to the server back, and it just works. And, you can do it. and then there's room for, it's abstracted away so we can work on the core and optimize it as much as possible. So that's the models. Um, I think that's all I have time for. There's a lot more on the website. Check it out.